Yes, Preeti, over to you, please. Thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, very good evening to everyone. I welcome you all. Uh, my name is Preeti. I'm one of the team leaders at Protest Professional Training. Before we start, uh, let me give you a quick you know, overview about us. Protest is a, a certification institute which provides upskilling courses to the professionals like HR generalists, HR analytics, POSH trainer trainer to deliver POSH trainings, corporate trainer and a facilitator, train the trainer. We provide customized programs. So all the programs are accredited by the topmost bodies like uh, SHRM, HRCI, CPD and IBEC. I'm so much glad to uh, you know, see many participants, uh, existing students, team members, as well as aspiring students of ProTouch who have joined this learning session today. Uh, I would love to know uh, from which locations you are, you are joining. So you can put it in a chat box. Great, Bangalore, Pune, Jalgao, amazing, Hannah, uh, obviously Vira, welcome. Tejal from Bangal from Mumbai, Hyderabad, Sumit, great. Satrujit is from Noida, Surabik, great, Nagpur, Muzaffarpur. So from Pan in the location, that's amazing to hear. All right. So how is the energy? You can let me know in the chat box on the scale of, you know, one to 10. Hi, great, nice, 10, hi, hi. 100, thank you, ma'am. Great. Hi, that's amazing to hear from everyone. Feeling great, your smile gives positive. Thank you so much for the feedback, Vira. So uh, now let's begin with the learning sessions with uh, Mr. Sumit Rai Saxena and our guest is speaker for today's evening. So uh, Sumit uh, comes with 14 years of rich and diverse experience in learning and development for telecom, e-commerce, banking, sales, and immigration industries. He helps leaders finding clarity about passion and purpose, identifying unique strengths uh, using uh, adaptive learning practices through coaching. He is also a corporate trainer and a green, be green belt uh, Six Sigma uh, you know, certified auditor. Uh, he is known for creative and uh, you know, strategic thinking. His vision is to enhance your learning journey by using adaptive learning practices. Uh, as your coach, he will be making your learning uh, you know, journey more exciting, fun, and uh, fulfilling. So please feel free to put your questions in the chat box. I'll take it at right time. Thank you. Thank you so much, Preeti, for that wonderful introduction. And hello, everyone. And thank you for your time and joining us today for this you know, another educational webinar from ProTouch. So today we will talk about a very interesting topic. You know, it's, an, it's a concept in itself, which is situational leadership. And I hope you will not only enjoy it, but will also implement it at your professional levels too. So let us quickly start what situational leadership is all about. So agenda for today would be, you know, understanding what situational leadership is all about. What are the various leadership styles we have experienced in our professional lives? What is a situational leadership model? What is flexible leadership? What are the four styles, you know, uh, leadership styles and the development styles under situational leadership and situational examples, when and where can this be used? Now, before we start, you know, uh, understanding what situational leadership is all about, I would like you to take you, you know, to an annual convocation ceremony of a school. Imagine you under, you know, uh, as an audience of an annual convocation ceremony of an elementary school. Now, if you can look on the screen, you know, you can see there is a statement 
that mentions don't grade me on my spelling rather grade me on what i wrote about yes so welcome to the annual convocations uh, ceremony of an elementary school now what exactly is happening here is you are about to witness 14 students you know they are ranging from grade levels of an elementary through high school standing tall and proud on the stage among you with the audience are about 700 teachers principals and administrators representing the nine campuses compromising of this elementary school the event like i said is the annual convocation kicking off the new school year one by one these students have started sharing their personal examples of the challenges they face every day dealing with dyslexia so for people who are very new to dyslexia you must have seen this movie tare zameen par yes how many of us have seen this movie tare zameen par that throws uh, that's that's great muskan liberita thank you so much so that that gives us an idea about you know the learning challenges a kid faces with dyslexia so one by one these students have started sharing their personal examples of the challenges they face every day with dyslexia I can't speak as fast as my mind moves, said one of them. People don't understand me. You know, the other one had to say about, I'm not stupid. I have dyslexia, said another one. Finally, a young, a very young, plump student, you know, one of the elementary students shared a message that summarizes all of the statements presiding here then that we just heard about. He said, Please don't grade me on my spelling, rather grade me on what I wrote about. You know, the impact of this message among the audience was so immediate and profound that there was not any dry eye left in the house. Plus, everyone, every teacher, every coach started pondering on their flexibility as the leaders of the respective schools and classrooms. These 14 students with dyslexia just school the entire 700 educational professions on the power of situational leadership as a leader as a teacher as a coach we tend to adopt various leadership styles depending upon the circumstances isn't it now what exactly has happened here was these teachers these coaches were using the very old fashioned way of you know uh, coaching the kids you know uh, making sure that you know the spelling is appropriate making sure that the way of you know writing is appropriate making sure that they are disciplined and all but yes every unique audience every audience has their own you know unique style of learning not everyone are you know of same school like you know there was an image you know uh, which i you know have gone through uh, in the internet very recently where you have all these animals a hippopotamus you know you have a bird you have an elephant you have a tiger and everybody is expected to climb a tree it's not possible, isn't it? Because everybody has a unique style of learning. Yes. So that is what situational leadership is all about. As a leader, as a coach, we meet so many people in our professional journey. But the leadership qualities that you display as a coach, you will also have, it is very important for us to adapt the situational leadership qualities and how to do that. What is situational leadership? How can I be a situational leader? And you know, create an impact among the audience or the team or an individual that I'm about to coach is what we are going to learn here today. Isn't it? Leading in crisis requires a different approach. Yes or no, compared to managing the everyday circumstances. Do we all agree with that? Yes? So exactly. So your leadership qualities that you display would need to change based on uh, thank you, Aparna, for you know saying hundred uh, percent. So you know, yes, your leadership qualities should change based on you know not change, but I would say as a coach, you should adapt certain leadership qualities based on the situations that you come across on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, before we start and get into the situational leadership model and how does it gets implemented, let us have a bit brief discussion about what do we mean by various leadership styles. Leadership styles can be categorized in many manners and we all are aware of it. We all are professionals here, isn't it? So I have categorized a few here based on my understanding and my own experience. So the leaders that I have met throughout my professional careers, and I'm sure most of you, you know, would be able to relate to, were authoritative, autocratic, 
they were participative leaders democratic leaders the one who believed in delegation of a work and also believed in giving a free hand to the team member or the respective teams so these are the leadership uh, you know uh, categories these are the leadership categories that we come across so i have a question for each one of you as a leader or as a coach where do you see yourself do you see yourself under you know an autocratic leader or have you do you see yourself as a participative or a collaborative leader or do you see yourself as a leader who believes in giving a delegation and you know have a trust on your employee or, or any individual that you deal with you you can yeah yes team protect aparna says you have to say what kind of a leader aparna is <laughs> muskan muskan says you want to be a democratic leader that's that's good to know so you know every one of us as and when we start a corporate journey or you know from the time that we uh, been go to school or colleges graduate we, we get graduate we meet coaches we meet leaders and everyone expect a leader to be democratic we expect a leader to be collaborative supportive trust in us and give us a free hand yes or no right so that's it uh, it's all about you know the leadership qualities that we get to see in our day to day life and in our professional experience now these two gentlemen that you see on screen are the one who have introduced the situational leadership theory mr kenneth blanker amit uh, just take a pause here i think manoj has a question i'm sorry aparna yeah. no problem manoj you have raised a hand do you have a question here manoj okay please carry for right so what exactly is situational leadership in context of this categorizations that we have just seen well situational leadership is not a category it it is a model in itself yes or no so this situational le leadership was developed 50 years back and is extremely used by various managers leaders coaches in order to get the best performance out of the team and individuals so like i said it was introduced by kenneth blankart and paul harsey these bent, these gentlemen here they have developed a very interesting way of looking at the team looking at leaders their styles how do they work and how do they manage the teams and individuals there is a wonderful book with name the situational theory published by dr kenneth blankart and a one minute manager if you have time and if you have time to explore i would urge each one of you to go and read those books or the articles related to those books to have a clear understanding on what situational leadership is all about please do let me know if you feel i'm running faster or if my rate of speech is fast you can put it in the chat box for me to slow down my speech for you so moving forward let us define leadership styles first so according to this model according to the situational leadership model leaders generally manage or coach people using these two behaviors as you can see it on screen the one is called directive behavior second is supportive behavior now what is directive behavior now directive behavior it involves a lot of telling i mean you will go on telling you will go on giving directions you will go on giving instructions to your team members on how the task needs to be done how the task needs to be accomplished and how it needs to be you know uh, completed or how do we need to i am unable to see the screen is everyone uh, rest of you are you able to see the screen here yeah it's yes okay so yeah that's that's good so man thank you so like i said directive behavior involves a lot of telling what needs to be done how it needs to be done whereas supportive behavior involves listening now here you are telling but you are also giving a lots and lots of support in terms of motivation in terms of confidence building in terms of building trust within your team members and all these things how many of us feel you know under a leadership a quality listening is very important that's that's great so can can anyone let me know why listening is important because, as a leader why because yeah. the one who is a good listener can only be a good speaker that's why that's, that's that's amazing muskan that's amazing yes 
So only when you listen, you can build a rapport with your team, team members. You can understand them well. You are giving them a space, you know, uh, you're creating an environment where you are making it a two-way interaction. And then you will also be able to understand the thought process of a person. Yes or no? So with this slide, we get to understand the two dimensions of uh, you know, leadership. One is directive behavior and another is supportive behavior. Do we have any questions here? Okay, so I'll take it as no. Thank you so much. Now, let us look at the leadership styles. If you could see the icon, you know, that is in the middle of this presentation, it says my style. Now, as a leader or as a coach, I want each one of you to gauge what kind of a leadership style, you know, you exhibit or you have been exhibiting in your professional experience. So one, it says predominantly directive. So predominantly directive itself says direction is what you give most as a coach. Yes or no? Then you have a mix of, mixed balance of direction and support. In fact, if you all agree, most of us fall here, mix of directive and supportive. We also direct the team members and we also extend our support. Followed by mix of directive and supportive, we have predominantly supportive. Predominantly supportive is nothing but a little bit lesser direction because it may be that's how you feel how people learn. Yes or no? At times, you will give a lesser direction and you will make them, you, you will see whether they are able to implement things on their own, whether they are able to execute a task their own and give the support wherever it is required. So this category of a leadership style has support as a dominant quality. Whereas here, the category one has direction as a dominant quality. And this one has a mix of directions as well as support. Now, another style of leadership is minimum directive and supportive. So finally, here is a style where you feel, you know, you provide neither too much of direction or too much of support, but you are more in a role of a counselor if required. And you are in a lot of observation mode, provide vision and new strategy to your team members. So people who have been a part of internship with ProTouch, you know, would be able to understand this. Aparna had been, you know, exhibiting uh, all these qualities. You know, she, uh, when we were new, when we were quite new, it's my personal experience when I was quite new with the training, I was given directions as to how to execute certain things, how to execute, you know, certain tasks or, you know, how to use certain tools you know, as, a, as a trainer. What kind of a tools that I can use uh, to make, to uh, exhibit an efficient uh, uh, training session. And then while we did that, we had a mix of directive as well as a supportive. Uh, you know, approach from Aparna. And then at times when we learned how to access these tools, there was a predominantly supportive uh, phase where we were left to implement things on our own. And then there was a support extended to us as and when it was required. And now in internship, you know, now that we have acquired that knowledge of how to use those tools and how to execute things, you know, she is under this observation phase. She's acting more of a, like a counselor, giving a support, and providing vision and strategies on how to execute it more efficiently. So I think we are able to relate all these things. Now that we've got to know these qualities of these uh, leadership styles, let us start naming them. So I welcome you to the naming ceremony of this leadership styles here. Now, if you could see the word, the letter S represent a leadership style. S1 is nothing but directive where telling is a dominant quality. S2 is coaching. So when I say coaching, it's more about selling. It's more about, you know, persuading your team member. When a team or a team member has some kind of a competence or when they are unmotivated or when they lack motivation, the leader is open to feedback. The leader is also open to collaborate, to boost the team or the team member's participation. Leaders using this style may help a team member develop and improve their skills. And this style can also encourage buy into a larger vision. Whereas directive style is useful when a team member requires a close supervision and a regular guidance. The leader here in S1 directive style makes decisions. He directs the team or a team member to their roles. This can include providing instructions to novice team members or taking charge in an emergency. 
So if we have trainers here, I'm sure you would, you know, see that your newly hired batch will fall under S1 mode. Here you act as a leader. Here you act as a coach who is in S1, where you are more directive. You hand over, you train them, you give them SOPs on how to execute the task. So this, this quality, this area has a quality called as telling or giving instructions, whereas S2 is about coaching and persuasion. Coming to S3, which is supportive. So the quality that a leader displays here is participative, collaboration, isn't it? Selling has motivation, pursuing a team member, whereas S3 has participation. Participation is useful when a team member has competence required to participate in the plan. You have a skill. Yes, so it all you need, all your team member needs is support. So in such case, you will use this S3 mode of category. Now coming to S4, which is delegation. Here, like I said earlier, you are more, you know, act, you will act as an observer and make sure that you're providing the new dimensions and challenges to the teams and individuals. Delegation is useful. It is pretty much required when a team or a team member has a high level of competence. He has a high level of skill. He's a skilled member and, he's self, and you know, he is self-motivated. Now that you have a team or a team member who is skilled, who is self-motivated, now the leaders who leverage this style will now set a vision. So as a leader, you set a vision, you outline a desired outcome and you grant a clear authority. They will then take on a more supportive behavior, getting out of the way and letting their team take over. So can you guys tell me which one works better? What style represents your personality as a coach? So where do you fall? I mean, do you fall under S1? Do you fall under S2, S3 or S4? What, what leadership style represents uh, you? I can say S2. S2, that's, 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 that's great, Vivian. I want to fall in S3, participative support. That's, that's, that's good to know. That's good to know. So what I'm going to do is by end of this session, I'm going to share you a link in the chat box here. So the link is of an assessment. You will assess it by yourself. You know, you, you, the questionnaire and the answers will not come to me. You will have to provide your name and the email ID. There is a list of certain questionnaires based on the situations that you as a coach will face and what, what kind of an action uh, you will take as a coach. By, uh, by submitting this assessment, you would get to know what kind of a leader you are, what category would you fall into? Are you a directive or an authoritative leader? Uh, would you fall under S2, leadership style, which is coaching? Would you fall under S3, where you participate and collaborate with your team members? And would you fall under S4, where you believe, build trust in them and delegate? So you will also get to know what kind of a leadership style represents your personality. So, you know, you may also have multiple of these styles. I and mean, as a coach, when I'm with the wise team members, new team members, person, people who are very new to my organization, I may act, I may use an S1 approach, right? When I am in the on-job training, I may use S2 approach. I will also give instructions and give support. When they come to operations, I may also become an S3 leader. I, I may use an S3, you know, leadership approach. For people who are with, you know, a high age on network, who, who are very skilled and have, you know, and, and are self-motivated, then I would go ahead and use S4 uh, approach for them, set new goals for them to go into their professional careers, isn't it? So it, it's okay. You know, so you, you, can, you like, can have multiple of these I would styles. like. However, say, there would be wait, one. Yes. Just a minute, you know. I would like to reflect on this. You know, we are saying that when people are new, when people are, you know, joining us, S1 approach is better. However, the next gen who is coming to the workplace, you know, they directly want to be in S3. Okay. Uh, the people want freedom, expression, you know, and don't tell me approach. So, you know, in my experience, I get to see that I mean, you know, what you're saying is right. Like when people are coming, let's use S1, then S2. That is, that is what we are saying. But now the kind of generation who is coming to workplace, 
expect us to go to S3 plus first. If they they find participative everything, then then they want us to come to S2 and then S1. We, I mean, they will not listen at the beginning. So that's the challenge. You know what I feel, which um, currently exists and prevails. Because yesterday, today, more afternoon, also I had a meeting with some of the senior level people, and they are also in the thinking in the same, you know, thoughts. What are your thoughts on this? Uh, others can also put it in the comment box. Am I making sense or not? But Sumit, I would like to have your views on this. Exactly, Aparna. Like you know, the concept itself says it's situational leadership. So you can switch your leadership style, you know, based on the audience that you get to train. Mm -hmm. Now, when we speak about supportive S three, you can be supportive. But what kind of a support as a leader I would extend when the person has a competencies issue? when he is not sure of his role what is expected out of him when he is not you know when we as a leader are not sure of the kind of skills that that he has what kind of a skills that he expertise into which is why we'll have to make him believe that s3 is there for support it's not about you know a quality one quality of being supportive it says the s3 area of styling has a support as a dominant category whereas if you want to if you as a you know if you as an individual would like me to be a uh, supportive leader i am here for you to support but what kind of ex support would you like me to ex ex you know extend to you when you yourself are not aware of your skills so get skilled first take the instructions get the directions and try to execute it then we will move towards s2 let me coach you will make you sit beside peers the people who are experienced in you know in the organization in the particular product or service let's see how they are performing those tasks and then whatever kind of support that you would need in terms of executing the roles or the tasks that you have i'm here as a coach for you so again aparna uh, to our training days when we got to know about adi module i would use the letter a here i will try to analyze the audience first and see what kind of a leadership style is required for me to train to that individual thank you so much so now another question may have you know or may also arise you know what may work for long which leadership style may work for long i mean this this is the question that i uh, you know got when i was researching about this you know uh, uh, topic on situational leadership like s1 s2 s3 s4 sounds good you know it's okay i can blend it based on the kind of you know uh, situations that i get to experience so what what may work for long and the answer is again it depends upon who you are leading so you'll go back and analyze the audience that you are about to train or about to coach or be a leader for and use the suggestive approach so there are certain facts you know which are listed by mr clen backert he says 54 percentage of leaders use only one leadership style regardless of the situation which means that 50% of the time leaders are using the wrong leadership style to meet the needs of their people so this these are the facts which he has mentioned in his book the one minute manager which is why he thought you know why not bring in a blending approach to change the leadership style based on the situation so it can target the right audience or targeting the right leadership style with the audience that we have that you generally coach to here now we see the development level we have the development level a leader has two dimensions of the personality of leading a learner or a team member or team itself you know may have two directions in order to work or i would say these are two important directions to work one is competency which is your ability to work it is related to the skills that you have so do your team member does your team member or do the team have the skills to do the job or not have they seen something similar earlier to do the job or not or you may have skills which are transferable and may be demonstrated right then you have commitment which is willingness this dimension shows how motivated you are as a leader and how confident you are that you will be able to do the job based on these two dimensions the performer can also be divided into four types exactly like leaders leadership styles 
Now that we discussed S1, S2, S3, and S4, similarly, we are going to discuss the four types of the development styles of the audience that we get to train. Now, what do we see here? There is a picture. There are, we have few kids who are struggling to learn a bicycle. Most of us in our childhood, you know, have been through this phase of learning a bicycle or a motorbike, isn't it, right? Now, look at this picture here. This boy who, is, who has got a very, you know, beautiful bicycle as a gift, and he's trying to learn bicycle here. It looks doable for him. I mean, it's like, okay, okay, I can do it. I can learn bicycle. But the moment we have the second picture, can anybody see what, what does this guy in, in an orange t-shirt represents? What kind of a situation he is into? Confused. Confused. Okay. Anybody, anybody else? Self-doubt. Self-doubt. Amazing. <clears throat> yeah, doubting himself. Doubting his strength. Doubting himself. Amazing, amazing, amazing. So he lacks motivation or he lacks confidence, I would say. Isn't it? Yes. Here, I'm pretty much confident because I, I have not even started, you know, uh, cycling. Yes or no? I go, look, okay, man, I'll plane bhi chala lunga. Yes or no? Kar lega. <laughs> Kar lega. Kuch na kuch nikal lega kind of thing. But the moment you start executing a task, there is a self-doubt. Now he's thinking, will I be able to do it or not? Yes or no? And what do you see here in this picture? Anyone, anyone can say, what, what do you see in this picture here? Lack of self-confidence. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what, what is the difference we have in picture two and picture three? Picture two is doubting himself and uh, picture three, uh, she might think whether should I continue or I can, I should quit. Something like that. She exactly. she's wishing to try, but she doesn't want to try or something. Like that. That's 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 amazing, Vivian. The word continue here in picture one. I have a zeal, but I lack skill. Picture two, I'm trying to do it, but the zeal is low. I mean, the confidence is low. In picture three, I started doing it, but I'm doubting whether I need to continue this or not. Most of us, you know, in a personal or professional uh, experience, you know, we stand here. Uh, if, I, if I have to speak about my personal experience, I quit. I had quit swimming in between. <laughs> I, I was very enthusiastic, you know, to be a good swimmer and all and all. I tried it for a few days, for a week. But the moment I was, you know, drowning a single day, the fear within, you know, it, it, I, I, I was not able to overcome that fear. So I am here in, in situation three, right? So I'm, I'm doubting whether I need to continue it or not, or I, I should leave it in between. Bhai, ye hamare bas ki baat nahi hai. Yes. Now, what do we see in picture four here? Satisfying. Pretty satisfying, task accomplished. I'm riding a bicycle and I'm quite happy. Yes or no, right? So, you know, these are, these are the situations here, you know, that we get to see uh, in, in, in a learning stage of an individual or a team. Here, they have the zeal, but they lack motivation. Here, they, they, they have the skills, but they lack confidence. Here, they are doubting themselves. But if they start continuing it, if they give time, believe in themselves, they'll be able to accomplish the task faster. So these are the kind of learners we have. When I say the letter S, what was letter S that we just learned about? What, what does the letter S represent? Style. Style, amazing, amazing. So letter S here represents a uh, learning style, whereas letter D represents the development stage. Okay, so D1, so the person who is in D1 category, he's an enthusiastic big, beginner, like most of us during our cycling days, you know, but the skills are less. There is a low competence, but a very high commitment. You know, I have a zeal to do it and I, I believe I'll be able to do that. But then D2, he's a diligent learner. He has some skills, but he lacks confidence here. D3, you know, reluctant contributor. 
i i have good good skills i have a high competence but the commitment is variable it fluctuates in between at times i think i'll be able to do that at times i think no ye mere bas ki baat nahi hai i am not a right person or you know this might not be a passion that i should develop kind of thing right but if i continue if i give time and practice i become d4 i am a peak performer right you have high skills you are very skilled and you are self motivated so these are the kind of learners or team members you know as a coach you will meet in your professional career you will have people who are very enthusiastic beginner who have low skills or very less skills but a good you know self motivation they are highly motivated then you have people who are delusion they have some skills but they lack confidence they need support and you as a leader are expected to extend a support then you have people who have good skills high skills but they continue you know they stop continuing or they doubt their ability to continue and practice that skill however you also have certain members d4 who are high competence who are high, who are who are high skill and are highly motivated so people who fall into d1 category these are enthusiastic beginners these are developing team they are developing team members who may not have the specific skill set required for the task but they have high commitment this might call for a more directive style of learning isn't it s1 where you need to give them instructions on how to execute it in which a leader or a coach will tell an employee what to do how to do and when to do so what do you think can help how can you help these learners so jasida we have jasida here jasida how do you think we can help these learners so everyone needs a different methodology no one method that worked for one person won't be used for another person so implementing different methodologies to help and help them learn is the way okay thanks jasida i'll rephrase my question again so if you happen to come across a member who falls under d1 category how would you go ahead and you know extend your support what can help for these kind of learners they should be coached they should be coached okay yeah showing them the future picture that one day you might be able to do it right okay. now no but one day you will be okay so thank thank you so much jasida so what i what we believe is you know we can connect them to more experienced peers and side by side coaching to speed up their skills and development guide puja said guide yes yes or no so we can connect them to the experienced people of that particular industry or that particular team and give them a side by side coaching to speed up their skill development to move them to d2 or i would say if you have someone who is in d2 who live in between or you know who who has some sort of skills but lack confidence so these are those kind of members who may have some skills but not at the level required to be successful in performing a task i mean as a leader you cannot rely on them ind independently to execute a task they are also not fully engaged in the mission so this often calls for a leadership style where a leader coaches team members in problem solving and engages them in the process so the leadership style that we use here should be s1 s2 s3 or s4 past participative sumit we need to participate yes. with them yes so of course i mean so the leadership style that you would end up using should be s2 approach i mean you also give them directions but you also extend your support so how can we help them is like you know by showing them commitment by recognizing their specific contributions and supporting their development needs so if we continue this the person it will lead to d3 so what is d3 d3 is high competence but a variable commitment isn't it so these developed team members are very high skilled and sometimes they have more expertise than the leader in the field we get to meet such people who would say sir aap to abhi abhi aaye ho but i am in this industry from last four years i know how a client works i know the client more than you i know him better yes or no we we come across such people in in you know our professional experiences however they may be lacking experience they may be experience a lack of drive or confidence around performing a particular task so the most appropriate leadership style to use here is the one that supports the team members and encourage participation 
the skills and knowledge of the team can be applied to the challenge at hand. So what do you think? What kind, how do we go ahead and help a team member or a team that falls into D3? So we have Dhyaneshwar. Dhyaneshwar, would you be able to help us understand what kind of a help can we uh, extend as a coach for people who falls under D3? Or anybody, anybody can, you know, help us understand what kind of a support would you think should be right? I mean, we are not assessing each other here. I think the person should work on the commitment on the behavior. Okay. This is the one last push for the final result. So That's... the leader needs to be like, give the one last push. Exactly. So what as a situation leader, supportive. You, delegation, supportive. okay, supportive, delegation, okay. So Sunita says delegation yeah, can help. So tap into a team member's desire for impact, isn't it? And a sense of meaning or purpose. I mean, you have skills, but if you're not willing to do it, then I'll tap in your sense of purpose here. Yes or no? Right. So like, like we have, you know, gone through this uh, example of, you know, bicycling thing. So what, what, can, what do we learn here is commitment depends upon where you are. Now that you know to drive with a lots of efforts, there is some sort of high incline or too much of traffic as a new bicycler or a, you know, a new rider who, who, who drives a four-wheeler, you know? And then you would say, you lose your confidence and commitment at certain stages. When I was learning a four-wheeler, I was able to drive it, you know, drive it very well on empty roads or at night times. But the problem was at a very high crowded area where I thought, okay, if, if, if the bike, if, if the motor, uh, if the you know, car stops in between, I'll, I'll call someone for help. Or I mean, this is not my cup of tea. I may not be able to drive. I should, I should invest some more time or maybe I should quit it. I should be happily riding a two-wheeler kind of thing. Do we fall under D3 category? Where you have a mind, where you have a doubt in, the, in your mind on accomplishment. However, with persistent learning, you will be able to accomplish it and reach to a D4 level where you are high skilled and you have high confidence. You're self-motivated. So these people who fall under D, D4, you know, they are peak performers of your team. These developed team members, they are very highly skilled, often more than a leader. They have a high level of motivation and a commitment. The leadership style that should support this kind of learning should be what? I think you can use the delegation or participative. Amazing, amazing. Now that you have a team or an individual who are self-motivated and who are highly skilled, S4 is a leadership sky, uh, you know, style that you are supposed to use here. The leader empowers team members to work independently towards achieving agreed upon goals. So what can help is about, you know, share about organizational goals so the team members can make more informed decisions here. So if your performer or the teams go through this cycle, what would be the right leadership to, should be applied? Let us look at this example. Now, imagine yourself as a leader who uses an S3 method of learning style. You give a high support and a low direction. And now you have this kid who falls under D1. He is an enthusiastic beginner who has low competency, but high commitment. So for this enthusiastic beginner, if you're using an S3, uh, style of learning. Do you think this is the right approach? No, it won't work. It won't work? Yeah, okay. because uh, he, uh, that person needs direction because he's a beginner. Exactly. So what kind of a leadership style would you think should be implemented here? S1, style one, telling. Perfect. Amazing. Thanks, Muskan. So S1 is something, you know, where you give directions, you instruct a person, to develop his skills and then move towards providing support. So let us blend these two, you know, learning styles as well as the development styles. Now we have S1, which has predominantly directive nature, where you go and, you know, you keep telling, you have S2, 
under coaching you give support you have uh, you give support as well as directions you have s3 where you support a team member with lesser directions and s4 where you delegate a you know a task to the team member who is highly skilled so if i go back here what do you think is a problem now that we have blended the learning styles and the development styles what do you think is a problem here if you have to describe it in two words what would it be so if most of you agree upon i see the problem in the alignment of a leadership style isn't it we have someone who falls under d1 and i'm aligning a s3 approach yes or no so like we said s1 if people are under s1 it is suggested or it is advised you know that we you, we use s1 approach for person or the team or an individual who falls under d1 similarly a person or an individual or a team who falls under d2 should be used in s2 approach and a person who falls under d3 should be used or it is advisory to an extent that we use s3 approach similarly a person who is under d4 who falls under d4 who is highly skilled and highly competent we should use an s4 uh, style of learning now what is the key the key is flexibility so what do, what do you understand with with the term flexibility here being open to adopt new ways exactly so this way you know you are trying to do something opposed to your personality but if you won't do that you won't be able to uh, you know create an impact as a coach or a leader and that's what all of us needs to understand so we have to think what's the best way in this particular situation or a level and then align your style based on that particular situation to be more impactful or powerful like apada just mentioned this is difficult because we have we all have our own unique style of you know coaching it does not come easy but it's like a scale you know uh, like any other skill it can move from d1 d2 d3 to d4 so it's not about you know that you're not a skilled leader or something like that but yes there is always a room of improvement and we all have a base where we all can improve from the base where we are do we all agree upon this yes that's great thanks sunita so like we said what does it needs it needs flexibility flexibility is the key to success to be you know a situation leader a situation leadership model it considers employee competence and commitment levels like we just learned this can vary across different challenges and performance areas it also considers the complexity of the task that needs to be executed and the level of direction or support that is required from you as a coach so what does flexibility allows you a leader to do it allows us to meet each situation with the leadership style that will empower the employees and bring out the best out of them so if i have someone who is falling under d3 i would use an s3 style to bring out the best out of him he is already skilled he is already skilled he knows how to execute the task all he needs is a support or a confidence yes or no i would not go ahead and use s2 style where i'll give him instructions because he know how to do it i'll not waste my time under giving him instructions and confusing him so let us look at the factors that falls under flexibility one is assigning task so you need to be very clear telling at times be authoritative second is participative so but if you are involved in a session where you are helping a person to grow you need to be participative similarly if there is an opportunity or there is a time to set directions to manage people to take them to the new life and new behaviors or set out new visions and strategy for the organization then you have to be progressive you cannot be participative you need to be progressive here here you are collaborating authoritative and you are really working on all the aspects of leadership so how do i do that now that we understood the learning styles now that we understood the development stages we understood the factors on how do we need to be flexible implementation 
implementation mechanism so what what would you need to do as a coach know your default leadership style gauge yourself assess yourself understand what kind of a leader you know default leadership style that you have been practicing understand the level of your team members understand the individuals you're coaching adapt the style to the ones that you already have or the ones that you already lead use right communication style now this is a very powerful point using the right communication style because that's very very important because development level requires a different communication style if time permits we will have an another session on you know how to use the right communication style in a professional life continue to analyze keep on analyzing people not everyone who falls under d1 will remain in d1 after a month or a two or three months or four months quarter to quarter you are you know uh, the person will move from d1 to d2 d2 to d3 d3 to d4 so you cannot go back and use the same learning style that you have been using with him in the past and be flexible in approach and change as a change when required now this last line you know being flexible i am able to recollect a small incident that uh, i got to uh, experience during a parents teacher meeting in my kids school there was one uh, you know uh, line a question where the teacher asked her to uh, let her know the color of an apple now the moment we say apple what color it reflects in your mind red red great but the kid has written it as green and the teacher has given her a full score and i was like quite surprised i said how can happy apple be green she said be flexible because your kid herself has told me that in a pepsodent touch she could see someone chewing a green apple right so the coach here was flexible isn't it isn't it a beautiful illustration on how to be flexible not every time an apple is green apple is red it can be a green apple too yes so this we i'm sure you are able to relate to the story that we heard in the starting part of the session isn't it thanks preeti now what are the qualities of a situational leader now the qualities of a situational leader are flexibility like we just discussed active listening like someone said in the starting part of the session that you need to be an active listener sense of direction provide a sense of direction to the team members right because situational leaders must be effective at the at providing the level of support and direction a team members need they must know where the team members needs to go and what is the right step to take them there then you should also have an ability to encourage the participation now situational leader encourage in behaviors that create psychological safety as well they provide opportunities for the team members to share their thoughts experience and inputs they also have the skills required to effectively delegate the authority to team member as and when it is required or when appropriate apart from encouraging a participation coaching skills is also an important factor that we need to look upon to be most effective situational leader we need to develop our ability to coach at a wide range of a development level these skills allows them to meet team members where they are and support them in getting what they need to be done so these are the qualities as a situational leader that you need to develop so if i have to quickly recap what did we learn today can somebody recap for me okay so what 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 did we got to know today is you know what is situational leadership style what are the styles of leaderships that a situational leader uh, leadership theory has what are the development styles what kind of a development uh, team members or you know the nature of development styles how do we go ahead and analyze them and how do we use a right learning uh, style to make sure that the learning is more effective and gives the desired outcome what is flexibility what are the characteristic a uh, situational leader should uh, leader should develop what kind of what kind of a qualities a situational leader should develop in his or her own field or industry that they work on so this is what i have to offer for you today now we are open for questions if you have any questions i'm free to answer or i can share you my whatsapp number if you have any questions you can text me over there that that should help
Okay, so I see no questions coming from the crowd. What are your takeaways? I, I'm, I'm, you know, quite happy. I would be very happy to listen to the takeaway. I have seen people making notes. I have seen people, you know, they are trying to understand things. You know, ex expressing their thoughts. So, what are your takeaway from this session? Sumit, I'd like to add on here. Right? Yeah. So basically, the first thing I would say, situational leader, as we were talking about today, I see you as a situational leader right now, sitting in front of me, because you work. <laughs> Well, first of all, right, you gave Aparna's example, I'm giving yours, because you were flexible, I could see as per the audience, right, and uh, you were an active listener, I could see that, right, all the qualities right in front of me here, you directed us well, and yes, you helped us participate today, at every step, asking questions, giving situations, and you guided us well too, so yes, I would say, great job done today. Thank you so much, Aparna. You made, uh, thank you so much, Sunita. You made my day. <laughs> thank you so much. Okay, so we have Rashmi. What kind of a leadership style do we see in PM Narendra Modi? I would say S2, both giving directions and support. Most of the time I have seen him displaying an S2 leadership style in giving directions and giving support. Surgical strike is one example. Yes. And another example is I've, I've also seen him, you know, using an S3 uh, style of uh, leadership where we had a failed attempt on, you know, uh, from ISRO, but he was yet there boosting up the confidence of the people and trusting their skills. What all would you think, you know, would Narendra Modi displace? I think he's a situational leader. He blends. I have seen him using more S2 and S3, but at times, yes. S4 is also there at times, you know. I have seen him uh, 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 giving a free hand to people to go ahead and implement things which are pretty much required. Yes, yes, Rashmi, thank you. So yes, we all agree upon that, you know, we have seen him using all styles of uh, situational example. Thank you for bringing uh, this into this session that we got a good example of a situational leader. Thank you so much, sir. Most welcome. Any more questions we, do we have? Libedita, what is your takeaway from this session? I would love to hear. Uh, just a minute. Sorry, I took time to unmute myself. That's perfectly so, fine. Yeah. So uh, there are four types of leadership. Uh, S1, S2, S3, S4. So S1 can be directing, S2 can be guiding, S3 can be supporting, S4 can be delegating. So, Great. S2 is both directing and supporting. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yes. So that's all. I don't know. I got I mean, definitely many more things I got, but yeah, this is the gist of it. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So thank you everyone for giving me time, for bearing me for an hour. <laughs> you know, I would love to listen to your feedback. If you have any feedback, please write, uh, write to me. I would love to listen to the feedback that can help me, you know, improve my skills as well. Hi, if I can ask a quick question. So yes. the type of style you use, does it always depend on the on uh, your team member? Of course, which is why we say analyze your team member first and then use the right approach. So it is very important for us to analyze the characteristics of a team member, see what kind of a development stage does he, does he falls into and use a right alignment. This is what we used a term called as right alignment. So you, you use a right you know, leadership style. So the question, the answer to this question is yes. Thank you. Most welcome. So thank you so much, everyone. You are free to give uh, your feedback. I'll also try to, like I said, like I promised, I'm going to give you a link, you know, uh, where you will be able to go through certain assessment questions and understand what kind of a leadership skills you have. And that will also pave a path of, you know, understanding what kind of a leader, uh, leadership style you use and how do we develop these skills to be a situation leader. So I'm sure you will find it helpful to go ahead and implement it in your professional lives.
I would love to listen to the feedback of viewers, you know, on how did you find this helpful and, you know, how is that you have implemented it in your professional lives too. So here is a link of SurveyMonkey for, for all of you. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much, Sumit, uh, for this amazing you know, uh, webinar today. It's, it's a one-hour webinar. And uh, as a team leader, I'll definitely implementing from now onwards on the leadership, whatever the you know, uh, learnings I have received from you today. Uh, thank you so much. Um, so now, uh, you know, now the platform is open for everyone. If you have any questions, please feel free to put it in the chat box. Also, I would like to mention that today uh, we have, you know, uh, pro founders of ProTouch with us, as well as director Dr. Parna and uh, Rahul, Mr. Rahul Sethi with us, who can help you get clarify, you know, about the clarity about ProTouch, you know, certification programs that we have. Any Kitty, questions? Is it open? Uh, is it open? I can ask, you know, not exactly uh, only on this, you know, particular session today we had. I have some other question. Can I put it now? Yes, of course, Nivedita.